Welcome to Power BI Professionals channel. In this video, we will walk you through with creating a Power Apps modern UI interface where you can learn techniques on how to modernize the look and feel of the app you want to build or you're working on right now. At the first part, we will start by creating a navigation bar in the left side of the app. Then, we will create sets of simple dashboards and charts that represents the performance of the team or group, including cards in the upper part of the app, which will show over all performances. At the last part, we will then build a modern-looking table or gallery in the lower part of the app to give list of all rows and allow users to add or edit any items in the list. Before we build this demo app, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to show your support in the channel's growth and future videos. The navigation bar is created as component of the app. Components help developers to reuse any features or functionalities to be used across all sections by simply adding it to the page. Function calls can be triggered from the screens by turning on the access app scope to the components. This will allow developers to add variables like set function. The navigation components is composed of icons, buttons, images, and labels that dynamically adjusted. It will only adjust based on the true or false value result when menu icon or cancel icon has been clicked respectively. In the lower part of the navigation, you can see which of these elements are icons and buttons. In the app, there are six primary screens such as Home, Dashboard, Search, Notification Page, Appointment Section, and Bookmarks Page. While in the upper part, you can see image and labels that will only show if the result value of variable var show navbar is true and will be hidden if the result is set to false. This is also applied to the cancel button and menu icon. Aside from this, when the result of variable var show navbar is true, the width of the component page will be adjusted to 200. If it is false, then the component page width will be 50. And that is the reason why when you click the cancel button, the component page adjusted to lower width, while it is adjusted to bigger width when you click the menu icon. The images has almost the same scenario, however, take note that both images are existing but only hidden and adjusted when menu or cancel button is triggered. In the next part, we will explain how the upper cards are created. The first step is to add a container. Containers are a great feature in Power Apps that will help you as developer to add multiple elements in a container without making all elements grouped as one. One of the advantages as well is that containers have drop shadow properties which allows you to select and add shadow effects in your app. Also, it allows you add border radius which is not available in a rectangle shape. The rest of the steps are repeated and can be duplicated. First, you may want to add an icon that best represent the key performance indicator you are trying to measure. Then, add two label elements. The first element is for quick description of the KPI, while the other one is to show the actual result or value of the performance. You can repeat this process by copy and pasting the rest of the elements, and change the text on every KPI. You may also want add a line in between every KPI. To do that, you can drag a rectangle shape, then change the width size to 1 or 2, then change the border color or fill that is visible but not too outstanding. The idea is to add a division across all KPI for visibility purposes and easier reading for your users. In this part, we will share how the quick dashboard was developed. First, in the left side, we added simple label elements and description. There are times that users are requesting to view income per day, per week, or per month. The idea is to use these labels to show the result of calculation. Currently, most of the elements are dummy sample only, hard-coded and fixed such as value for overall summary, revenue summary, and team performance. This part of the section shows you what are the available concept you can apply to your projects in Power Apps. Feel free to change this section based on the requirement you need. Second, you might be wondering how we are able to develop the bar graph. In reality, this is not a bar graph. This is actually a gallery. The steps are as follows. First, add gallery in the container, then add images. 
The images added in this gallery is automatically adjusting based on the value of the data under group column. We use the function switch instead of if function for easier writing and debugging. Then we will add two rectangle shape. The first rectangle represent the 100% or the target, while the second rectangle will automatically adjust based on the actual percentage result. So the idea is, we will get the width size of the first rectangle. Then we will format the width of the second shape by multiplying the width of the first it to the percentage result. The result will be a value lower than the size of the first shape. While the middle part donut chart is actually a pie chart feature of Power Apps, the concept is we added a circle shape in the middle part of the pie chart, then changed the color fill of the circle shape. This is one the trick in Power Apps on how to make a donut chart instead of using SVG. Since the middle part of the donut chart is empty, we added a KPI percentage. You can remove this part if you don't feel doing this in your app. This part of the app might be confusing at the start, but by practicing and following all steps, you should be able to replicate this into your app. And in the last part, we will discuss the table summary. Similar to the dashboard, we will utilize gallery feature of Power Apps to create a table-like features. To really understand this section, make sure that you have prepared your own data table and import it directly to the app. You can also add data to a collection. First add container, then add gallery inside the container. You can resize the width and height of both container and gallery. Secure a space in the top portion for the header. This is because gallery doesn't have a feature to add table headers and must be created manually. Take note that one of the downside or not yet developed feature in Power Apps Gallery is that there is no direct properties to scroll horizontally and can only be scrolled vertically by default. However, it won't limit you to be creative and most of your requirement can be covered by the existing properties despite the limitation. Once gallery and column headers are added, you can now insert elements inside the gallery. You will notice that most of the elements in this table are labels, images, buttons, and checkbox, which you can replicate immediately. What makes this table modernized is the color combination, font selection, font size, and white spacing. While the idea behind the checkbox is to allow multiple selection for each rows, there are some instances where you want to allow your users to multi-select and update it in one go. This can be done by adding rectangle and place it in the back of all elements. When checkbox is clicked, then change the color fill of the rectangle. You can use switch or if function. The logic is, if the checkbox value is true, the color fill of the rectangle is black. If not, color fill is dark blue. That's it for this video, and if you enjoy this and learn from it, please don't hesitate to comment, raise your question in the comment section. Follow for more videos, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future.